You're listening to FTO Podcast on the FTO Network. Listen and enjoy. All right. How's it going, guys? D here, FTO Nerd Talk. Um, today, we've got a special guest. It's uh, Jason Martin. He did the uh, Pope Girl. Is it Pope Girl's comic? Is that what it's called? I keep forgetting the name of this thing. I keep wanting to say Pulp Fiction, but I know that's not right. <laughs> Pulp Girls. Yeah, that's the, the brand. Gotcha. Uh, what uh, what got you to create, create this series? I see like a, a long list of titles. The uh, Was it Amalgama, Danger Dolls, uh, Vent Blade, Princess, Princess, Star Thief, and like the, the titles keep on going. I think like the Swiss, Swiss Army Woman also. That's a, that's a machete, not machete. It's very grindcore kind of feel to it. Yeah, uh, Swiss Army Woman's the, the Kickstarter I just did, and that's a concept. The Pulp Girls was a collection of concepts that I came up with years ago. Like you, like you mentioned, I've I've been working in comics for a while, and I've worked on lots of different books. Uh, I currently write Vampire, which is a monthly ongoing comic, and, and another book set in that universe. Um, but uh, Swiss Army Woman was a Kickstarter I did uh, on on my own just recently, and that. Uh, you mentioned it had a, kind of a grindcore, grindhouse feel. Grindhouse, a big grindhouse. Yeah, sorry about that. that. That concept was actually, like I said, the Pulp Girls concepts were, were concepts that I cooked up years ago when I was working on my first uh, self-published comic book, Super Real. Um, when I worked on that, I did a couple special issues where I collaborated with other artists, like Josh had. Howard. Like Josh Howard. Oh yeah. my God, I love Josh Howard. I'm sorry, I'm geeking out a little bit. I love. Dead at 17 was like, was my jam as a kid. Oh, no way. So loved it. Uh, he and I started out right around the same time. Uh, uh, I, I met him my first Comic-Con in 2003. I saw the giant Dead at 17 banner and it was like a tractor beam. Um, that, that's not what caught me on to Josh Howard. It was actually the fan trailer that got me hooked on him. Oh, yeah. It was like a five minute fan movie about uh, right. Dead at 17. Yeah, that was what, five, ten years ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and they got yeah. me hooked on him ever since then. I, I've been following him on all his platforms. But yeah, I, I I was fortunate enough to meet him, and 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 uh, uh, he was one of the artists that that did uh, a guest section in in Super Real. And uh, it, so, anyways, there were these concepts around that time that I, I uh, uh, around two thousand eight, the the Grindhouse movie came out and the first half of that was robert rodriguez's planet terror which had the protagonist <laughs> terry darling which is the girl with the machine gun leg, right the go-go dancer with machine right. gun leg. oh it would be so awesome to do a cherry darling comic you know i'd love to get the license to that and do that comic book that would be so fun that's such a fun character um you know i absolutely love the movie and uh i thought well uh you know that that'd be too much work i could just create my own create uh, your own character yeah what about Swiss Army woman? She's got a Swiss <laughs> Army knife for a leg. So that's when that was born. And so that had been in the... Uh, that's cool. I dig it. Cooking in the background for years here. So while I'm reading this, and I'm noticing that she's calling out all these different types of tools for her, uh, for her weapons in her Swiss Army leg, pretty much. Is she speaking German? She's speaking French? Why, why all the different languages uh, to call out these different tools? Um, well, it's, it's set in Switzerland and, um, you know, when, in my vast, uh, research for the concept, i.e. uh, reading the, the, the Wikipedia page. You learn um, people in that area uh, speak multiple languages? The, uh, yeah, the, there's, there's, if, if I rem remember correctly, there's three or four predominant languages that are spoken in Switzerland and right. it's depends on the region. So I decided to infuse that into the character by just having her uh, speak in kind of a junk language that's just a mixture of, uh, you know, the, the language is German, French, and and I, and I like to mix in some some Dutch in there just to kind of customize it a bit. Makes sense with, with the English. So, yeah, having fun uh, with that. <clears throat> when it came to Princess Space, Steve. Um, Princess Star Thief. Star, sorry, my apology. <laughs> <laughs> it did. It takes place in space. Her spaceship is. Uh, <laughs> her spaceship is. Uh, um, is he anatomically correct? It's like it's, it's a man, right? The spaceship is a guy. 
Well, it's it's a it's a giant mech. Okay. So it's uh, y no, it's not anatomically. <laughs> <it's not. laughs> Although I do have in my many notes and ideas for Star Thief, I I I haven't decided whether I will. I have the idea of having what appears to be a robot, but it's actually an alien a, or a small humanoid inside what is a giant mech to them, but it's just you know human sized. Uh, gotcha. Yeah. No. The um. The mech in Princess Star Thief, which uh, she pilots as a, a ship somewhat. It, 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 in the first issue, we only see her in the mech. We don't get the details of how that works. But the idea is that would be short range and that, that she's got a larger ship close by that that docks into. But uh, the, the idea for the mech was that I loved uh, uh, Shogun Warriors. In the late 70s, there were the giant... Uh, three foot plastic toys. Oh, I remember. Yeah, and uh, I always had an affinity for those. I have a. I had the Godzilla. I still have him. He's on top of my desk. But uh, so I had wanted to have her in like a Shogun Warrior. I get that. That makes sense. But then, um, so uh, with that that issue, the artist was Salor, and um, so I had some rough designs for what I wanted and he kind of took it and, and, you know, changed it a little bit in, in, in his way. Yeah. I saw like at the end of the comic book, you had different pinups and different like designs of how you wanted her to look before the finished product. And I don't know how you pulled off those amazing artists for the pinups, but they're absolutely amazing. Oh, thank you. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of great artists that uh, uh, did the pinups for, for that first issue. And, um, that gets back to kind of where I was talking about where I, when I first started collaborating with artists, um, this is 10 plus years ago, used to be on, on, uh, deviant art, you know, before social media really took off. <laughs> That's how I used to follow DeviantArt Josh was, Howard. Yeah. <laughs> and deviant art was the hub for, for, for comic artists. Before Instagram was the thing. Absolutely. Deviant oh, was yeah. to go. Facebook before all of that. And, um, the uh you know back in the myspace days uh or before that <laughs> <laughs> but uh so yeah i met a lot of a lot of like-minded artists on there and you know started collaborating with them and uh so so um kind of like there's the, a kinship that, and then also you know i've continued to work in comics and i've been fortunate to work with a lot of great artists so so these, like a lot of you guys like who a lot of like, like these people who did this uh these covers and pinups for you they're they're longtime friends is what you're trying to tell me yeah, yeah. Some. Oh man, jealous, jealous. You like you got friends that pull up like that. It must be fun, like name dropping at parties and whatnot with those guys. <laughs> uh, I noticed something else about these two characters. Also, they both have uh, calls for the weapons or accessories that they use. Was that intentional or that that just like happenstance? Did you say they have calls? Uh, yeah, like uh, so when Swiss Army woman shouts out like a uh, flame door. She does that, or when uh, uh, Starty oh, calls out like the eye thing. Making sure I heard you right. Yeah. Um, yeah. What with, with certainly with Swiss Army with Swiss Army woman, that's intentional, and some of that is to do with um, because it, I, it it sounds it read I think it reads cool, you know. Right. But, um, it also a lot, uh, some things are born from wanting to highlight what you're reading, you know, um, and, or, you know, it just enhances to do it that way. So like in the case of Swiss army woman, I just think it's cool for her. It, it not only is it cool for her to call out the weapons, but it also helps you follow as a reader helps you follow along. So you're not confused. Like what is she using there? Or, you know, I get that. I get that completely. That sounds like a pretty, it, like it, it's that throwback back to those old nineties and eighties type of uh, cartoons and comic books where like they used to say the call name for the stuff and then like the thing would happen. It just like gives like a little fun break for the monotony of fighting bad guys all the time. I dig it. Right, uh, right. So yeah, I mean, I'm uh, uh, came up with eighties uh, cartoons and all of that. So that's in the mix. Like, kind of like your bread and butter, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Brian Michael Bendis, I'm going to switch it up from like from talking about the comic book stuff and talk about some news that's happening right now. I'm not sure if you've been reading the Superman from DC comic books, but uh, Brian Michael Bendis is ending his run. Are you? Well, are he's you another good friend of mine, so let me is tell he? you. Is he? here. And, and I'll tell you exactly how good a Name dropping I'm. again. There it is. Um, I <laughs> watched uh, 
of the hateful eight with Brian Michael Bendis. Now, oh, wow. mind you, he didn't know that we did. I just, I saw him in the theater. <laughs> <laughs> he lives in Portland. I live in, uh, I live in Portland. So no, I don't know him, but I know. <laughs> I've, I've enjoyed a lot of the stuff that he's done and I have not read a Superman. I'm not a big DC guy. Um, more of a Marvel guy when it comes to my, you know, old school Marvel DC uh, preferences. It's but, more to read. Uh, it's very uh, thought driven. Like he, uh, he puts a lot of like nuance inside the, the character of Superman. It makes him a lot more interesting than he's been in a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 not that I don't read DC comics, but um, I, yeah. uh, I generally pick up DC stuff when they get artists on there that I like. Oh, you're more of a eye candy kind of guy. Much to, to my, to my liking. I'm a, I'm a comics. Comics are a visual medium. I'm a, uh, I love I love the art first and foremost, but yeah, uh, great writing goes a long way too. No, I hear you. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I haven't I haven't been reading his. I started I read the first couple issues of his. Was it the Man of Steel, the first miniseries? Right, like, the like it was a six part. But I don't have to read it. I just I'm a I'm a comic book junkie. I don't know how to say no to <laughs> stuff. You must have piles all over your own. my stomach. I buy way. <laughs> I, did you say I must have all my home? You must uh, have just piles things. like everywhere. Piles of boxes. Or piles piles of boxes. Short boxes. I have about five short boxes next to the bed in the bedroom. And then I've got, I don't know, how, a couple dozen or more in my office and then more in the garage. But, uh, and that's just, <laughs> most of those are the ones that I haven't read. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, know like that. I, say, I buy too many and I don't get to read them all. I'm um, one of those guys so who have to convert. I try to, to be a little, uh, pick my battles when it comes to stuff like if i have to read it or not i know i, I know the feeling believe me yeah, all too read, wrong so i didn't follow the, the ben of superman but i did just see there was a, i don't know if it was on the beat or or elsewhere the the blurb where he was quoted as saying that he's nearing the the end of his run and that right. it was a real head scratcher so uh, you know the obvious question for me is does that mean um you know does that dovetail into everything that's going on with dc and you know rumors or speculation as to what might be driving what they're doing you know is, is are, are they are they shutting things down and that's why or was this always planned or is he, you know i saw so i haven't seen it he's, well he's uh, only named the superman run the legion is still going he still has uh his vertigo titles that's still going also uh, uh, and I, i'm picking up legion i read the first issue but i haven't uh, I was going to wait till the, uh, most books I'll, 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 I'll read like the first issue to make sure I like it. And then I'll wait, pick up the trays afterwards. The story arc. Well, no, I pick them up in singles, but I, I read the story arc once it's completed. Cause otherwise I can't remember, you know, when I get to issue two or three, what the heck happened, you know? <laughs> yes. That's very old school collecting right there. Makes sense. Um, but also too. because I, um, I'm such a, 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 I have such a, a bad comic book habit. I, I, I list the sets on eBay once I've read them. <laughs> oh, you end up selling some. I'll set some of my costs, you know. <laughs> no, I get that because sometimes, like, hey, I'm reading this, but I really don't need to read this anymore, and uh, might as well just sell it. So yeah, end up having to donate some of mine. So I get the feeling, man. But uh, yeah, I've got, I haven't, I haven't uh, read beyond the first issue of, of the, the Legion, but the, I, I'm a, I love the Legion uh, concept. Um, uh, I first was uh, exposed to them when there was Legion, the Legion Lost. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of that or are familiar with that. That was a story arc. What year? Um, uh, probably 15 years ago, give or yeah, take. Yeah, I thought so. It was, uh, it was the first I had seen, and I don't know how you pronounce his last name, Oliver Ko Koipo, Koipio. Oh, right, right. Uh, Koipo. His artwork, Koip Koipo. Yeah, he, uh, did, uh, he, he did a Spider-Man for a while. Yeah, he did most of the Spider Verse covers. Yeah, and he did uh, Civil, Civil War. Yeah, that's right. He's done a lot of a lot of high profile stuff for for Marvel and a lot of covers, and um, I think he did, did he just do covers on Thor. Mostly now, yeah. But anyways, um, it was a really a uh, great story arc. And around that time, that, that was, I guess that was around the same time they had the. I don't know if you ever saw the Legion of Superheroes cartoon. That was I did. The, the same, you know, when you had like Superboy, who was much like Batman. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Love the cartoon, but yeah, I love that concept. But it, take it or leave it in terms of the different creative teams. They and they've relaunched that so many times. They really, they really changed it a lot since like since those days, definitely. 
but yeah, so looking forward to checking out Bendis' take on it. So you said you had a Kickstarter with the Swiss Army Woman, and um, the Princess Star Thief is also out. What other titles should we be looking out for? Or like go pick up if we haven't read them yet? Uh, well, Swiss Army Swiss Army Woman just came out, and that's available. Um, and, and then the Princess Star Thief, um, it, I'm getting ready to launch a new Kickstarter for that next week. Do you say you're um, redoing it or something? Something like that? Yeah, I'm calling it Issue 1 Redux. So uh, I, did, <laughs> I did the first issue, which uh, you uh, shot you a copy of um, in 2006. I read it. It was really good. It was fun. Thank you, thank you. And um, hypersexual, but like since since you're going for that uh, that grand house kind of feel, it makes sense, right? Um, yeah, I like to say I, it's it's good girl in style, not not bad girl. Like you know, I, it has a very I, like tank girl kind of feel to it. I know what you mean. Like they yeah. make they make the rules, they make the decisions. Like they are who they are because they want to be this way. I got it. But um, so uh, I had been wanting to continue that series since we did the first Kickstarter and I hadn't, wasn't able to keep Salora on board with that. So I'd been looking for an artist all along. And then with the uh, uh, pandemic here, shutting some stuff down, uh, started collaborating with, with Winston Young, who I've worked on uh, a lot of books in the Danger Doll universe with a lot of the monthly comics that I do through, through Danger Zone. Um, uh, you also work with Ashland. So uh, there were some things in the first issue that I really, uh, in the in the years since that's come out, I've developed the concept more, and so some things I wanted to change, and I really uh, kind of rushed the ending of the first issue and wanted to to tease into the bigger concept more at the end. So I'm looking to to redo that and expand it a little bit. So that's why it's uh, issue one revisited. I guess is it going to be like uh, like how it was in the '90s for Image, where they redo issue number one, like Dark Child or something like that? Is it going to be in that kind of similar, or is it going to be like a, a continuation of the series that's already going? Um, I don't know the '90s Dark Child reference, but uh, it's it, it's basically the same story and plot as the original first issue, it's just redone with with new elements. Okay, and, so yeah, uh, it's 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 a so, little like that then, yeah. So I guess the analogy that I like to think of for it is, you know, with, with Star Wars, it's infamous. Uh, before the original film, it was originally called The Star Wars, I think. And the story was quite a bit different with, you know, there were a lot of elements that were changed before when it actually became the film. Like, like Jabba the Hutt was the actual Luke, person. So Luke Star they... Killer became Luke Skywalker and things. Like that. So it, it, it's kind of similar to that. You know, I got gotcha. you. This, this first book is it still stands, but it's. A slightly different version of little things here and there. That's exactly mm -hmm. how it was for Randy Queen when he did Dark Child. He uh, he changed little things here and there, and he, like kept rebooting the story over and over again. So yeah, it reminds me a lot of Dark that. Child. The one that uh, that was uh, she had two minions, War and Peace, a little small it, red, right? yeah. And whenever she dreamed, she uh, whatever she dreamed became reality. I never never read that one, but it was well, interesting. Well, What's isn't like, isn't it, it was interesting? Isn't the guys of like of your type of stories? It's uh it's very it's very hypersexual, but very action packed. Also, uh, if you haven't read Randy Queen, Dark Child, I talked about it quite a few times in the podcast. It's uh it's worth picking up. Just just that subtle '90s nuance. It's always fun just to go back into that era. Like Tony Daniel, uh, J. Scott Campbell, those guys. They always did uh this stuff like like in that style, and they did it well. So uh, Todd well, Winning, I'm a huge huge J. Scott Campbell fan. Um. Loved, loved his Gen 13, you know. And, exactly. His Gen 13 uh, was amazing. And all his covers. I, I, so I was a comic fan uh, in the... I, I started in comics with the, the Marvel adaptation of Star Wars um, and then got into other Marvel comics. And I was into comics into the mid-'80s. And, and, oh, and, so when Star Wars and Marvel were the same covering up. Not when they were Dark Child. I got you. Dark Horse. Right. Dark Horse. Right. Dark Horse. Uh, so, you know, Marvel did G.I. Joe. So I read a lot of their licensed comics and got into their superhero comics, too. Gotcha. Got the, the independent comics of the 80s and all of that, you know, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Cerebus, etc. But I, I got out of comics in the mid to late 80s and then back 
into them again in the mid 90s so i missed the <laughs> the majority of the 90s image boom era you know and everybody's always laughs you know well you didn't miss anything but uh um, <laughs> well <laughs> you when i got you missed a dark comics, night in watchmen <laughs> I, was I saw all these artists and i was like oh these are like you know this is the type of art style i always used to dream of you know this is amazing so you came back in time just for preacher to then yeah hopefully and how you know i never read preacher and uh i watched the show and enjoyed it <laughs> if you read if you read the comic book it will blow your yeah. mind <laughs> uh they, there's a lot of things they can't do in the show and they didn't and sure. that book wow super dark <laughs> Uh, there's one last question I had for you. This uh, Amalgama came out in 2019. Like this, uh, this came out. I'm guessing before well, the Swiss Army Woman came out. Uh, I didn't get to read this one. Can you tell me a little bit about that story? Sure. Yeah. So uh, first, to kind of circle back, you asked what other what other stuff I had, and that kind of plays into that. Um, right. So I had mentioned that there's a comic series that I created and write called Vamp Blade. That's an ongoing monthly series. And that's set in the same universe as a comic book, uh, as the comic book Zombie Tramp. Okay. Uh, which we call the Danger Doll universe. There's a, a few different characters that are within that universe. And, and they, have um, the, they have the Danger Doll Squad too, right? Right. Danger Doll Squad was when we took the, the separate characters and put them together. And then I co-wrote and wrote that, and that was Zombie Tramp, Vamp Blade, and another character called Dollface. So the three characters that had their own three separate books. Vamp Blade was one I created, Zombie Tramp was created by Dan Mendoza, and Dollface was co-created by him and Brian Seaton. Um, so you got about five five different titles in the Share universe. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So what happened was with the Danger Doll Squad, it, we did a mini series of that, and it was popular. So we did a sequel series, and in the sequel series, uh, I, the idea was to send them to space. So it's Danger Doll Squad, Galactic Gladiators. We had never done anything. <laughs> Again, Grindhouse. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Sounds like a fun um, read. But so within that story. Uh, without getting in the weeds on the story, basically the three characters, uh, their, their genetic material is taken to combine an amalgamation of the three of them. And uh, that was the character that would become Amalgama. Oh, that's cool. So in, in, the, the, in the, the sequel series, Danger Doll, Danger Doll Squad, the, the Space One Galactic Gladiators, there's, uh, the, the villain is Amalgama, which is, uh, this woman who's uh, kidnapped them to put them into to, uh, gladiatorial combat. Okay. But instead of just taking the three of them and putting them into combat, she takes she she mashes up different uh, species and aliens, you know, from from around the universe and, and 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 forces them to fight each other. So the three of them are combined into this new uh, amalgamated character, and that's what goes on to become its own character with the Amalgama Space Zombie uh, miniseries that was that just came out earlier this year. There were four issues. We've got a, a second series that's uh, coming out. Things were, it was supposed to come out in August, but with uh, with the virus and the shutdowns, that's been delayed. Just but, slowed uh, everything down for you. four issues are out, I believe. Yeah, the fourth issue came out, yeah. So she's pretty much, like, is she in a way that how how Deadpool is uh, mixed in with, uh, I forget the character's name, but like, is it, is it similar to that, like where they talk to themselves or do they have just one hive mind? Well, so that's kind of what the series is exploring. Um, uh, so <laughs> with, with uh, the Galactic Gladiators, the Second Danger Doll Squad series, you have the template for this character created but then there's the origin series for Amalgam of Space Zombie, which is it's a, it's kind of complicated to explain. Sounds like a, um, sounds like a psychological comedy. Well, I can dig it. Amalgam Lives, which tells the origin of Amalgam, which takes her fr from the... It, so you've got the villain from the previous series who is now controlling the body of this amalgamated character. And then through the 
through the origin series, the Amalgam Live series, um, that consciousness is ousted. And then when we start the Amalgam of Space Zombie, it's the th it's remnants of the consciousness of the three characters that are battling to kind of form their own, become their own character. The, the fans character. must have been eating this up, man. Those so there's, fans. You know, there's the three different voices that are kind of controlling it. The fans must have been going crazy for this. They had to have. That sounds awesome. Yeah, the, um, it's a fun, it's a fun character. <laughs> right on, man. <laughs> well, this has been fun, Jason. It's been nice having you on. Um, you said the Kickstarter is going on right now for Swiss Army Woman. Well, that that finished, but the, oh, the book is finished, uh, and uh, just about to start next week. We we launched the Kickstarter for for the new Princess Star Thief. And where can we find the comic? So if you go to pulpgirls.com, you can link to my uh, uh, web store. Or if you go to Kickstarter and look up either of the books, you can find them there. And are all the titles at your website? Um, no. The, 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 the Danger Zone titles like Van Plate and Amalgama, etc. cetera, um, I have some of those in my web store. Um, I also have an eBay store where I sell sell my comics. Um, okay, but you can get oh. those through any comic shop. The 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 Danger Zone, the the Danger Doll Universe stuff. Gotcha. You can get them through any comic shop, but you can you know so you can get them at any online retailer retailer too. But this, uh, uh, a lot of those are available in my store or my eBay as well. Which and I'll put the link right to the description. Com, also. You can link to my store or my website, which has links to everything too. All right. Well, this has been great. I hope you're doing all right there, Jason. Uh, I hope everyone had a good time listening to the story. Those comic books sound amazing. Uh, the first two, the first two issues of both uh, <coughs> uh, Star, Star Thief, uh, Princess, Princess Star Thief, and Swiss Army Woman. That name is uh, it, it keeps hitting my tongue, but uh, it, they're good. <laughs> they're really good. Go check them out. Go read them, Jason. This has been great. Uh, you guys have a good one. All right. Thank you.